Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Learn to Draw 101 class with your lead instructor, Mr. Derek Stevens. Hey, Derek. Hey, man. How are you guys doing tonight? Oh, doing all right. Better than you, it sounds like. It, you've just been hey, through it, so much lately. I man, seriously, it feels like there's been a plague upon my house. My kids both, one at a time, have been sick. School has been canceled. We lost power last night uh, for most of the night. Um, I had to sleep in the front room to keep the fireplace going, and I actually fell asleep on fire duty, which sucked. I woke up like, oh, it's kind of freaking cold. Let's start <laughs> another fire. I don't know. I don't know. You guys ever watch, like, Little House on the Prairie? Yep. How in the crap? How in the crap do they do that out in the frontier days? Because it takes a lot of wood. I mean, it took almost four guys to chop down this tree in my yard, so it wouldn't lay it on power lines, and then and then split it all. And we had like power tools. And poor Paul. <laughs> yep. And, and then you know, it loaded my fireplace is good for like an hour and a half, two hours top. So every two hours you're getting up. I would be so cranky. I won't have any time to make any more babies to help with the farm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> yeah, I do. You know, it's this funny. Like, That's how it was when I was growing up. My we uh, the only heat we had was a pot belly stove in our house. That's it. <clears throat> wow. But I am good. I'm not coughing as much. Uh, I, I've been on two rounds of antibiotics. Steroids makes me want to talk like a governor, big muscles and stuff. But uh, mm-hmm. So hopefully I'm, I'm doing a lot better on that front. I got some, uh, some good stories about freelance. Uh, I, did, I did put a post on 3D Buzz. And I, I'm stepping off this cliff and doing nothing but freelance. Um, I got... Lots of comic book work, done some work for guys in England. This one guy um, who worked for Sega and LucasArts, I've been working for him. However, it seems the, the bigger type art guys, I don't mind people being picky. Oh, but oh my gosh. And Nelson, he may be here in the room, but he's, I had, I had to sign an NDA, so I can't disclose a lot. But he got to see what I was working on. And he's like, oh, my God, the more you do progressively, it looks uglier. I'm like, I know. I'm so used to drawing <laughs> hot, sexy, sexy things. But but is this, it supposed to be looking uglier? Is that the well, goal? That's my wife's theory. No, I, I, I just – there's a certain animal in Australia that rhymes with a, a bangaroo that uh, <laughs> I'm – I'm drawing, but, but mixing, but mixing with a woman, right? And the whole deal is. I've never is, heard of a bang baroo in my life. I'm just saying. You know, That's different. You've never heard of a bang baroo. A bang baroo ain't my oh, baby, mate. Um, but anyway, it's for some. And he won't even tell me who I'm working for, right? He's like, it's uh, it's for some big gaming company that's very well established in, in the online gaming thing and they're going to be debuting a new engine soon and we have to have the animal that rhymes the bamboo because they want to debut this, this animation engine. I'm like, all right. So the story is very sketchy and he was really picky uh, but he paid. I'm like, okay. so And he paid well. but That's what I'm talking later, about. It's, it's good, but later on yeah, well, the ear isn't quite right, and the spine has to line up with the second spine. And I'm like, what? And she's a human. She has human boobies and a human face, but the bamboo's body, even the short arms. So I'm like trying to do my best to give this like pinup, awesome, sexy look. I mean, as sexy as you can make this thing, right? And, and Nelson's seen some of these pictures, and they look pretty cool. And he's like, no, too human, too human. And I literally had to take a the animal that rhymes with bamboo and a, and a, f- a female's face and boobs. It's, it's, it's ugly. <laughs> it's, it's ugly. And then he's like, uh, her, her breasts are too big. So I had to shrink them down. And it makes sense if the bamboo animal's jumping around, <laughs> you don't want her to get black eyes, right? <laughs> it's <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah. No, and I then, guess the, not. <laughs> and then the pouch. The uh, if, if it does have a pouch <laughs> and it's related to the marsupial family it looks like this this ugly thing had a c-section there's nothing sexy about it and I'm so not, what you're I'm saying not... is it looks like a stripper like on some off roads down in somewhere i'm not gonna say a state i'll offend somebody but oh no, i i will i'll say jb jb's in carbondale illinois the first place there ever was a bouncer there was the girls would dance on stage right and uh 
they, they sometimes get tipped, sometimes not, but they go out into the crowd like, would you like to tip me? And this one dude I was I was with, I was on my night off, and he's like, yeah, you can use this for your tooth fund. I mean, she had buck teeth. She could eat an apple through a picket fence. It was oh. terrible. <laughs> All uh, but, right. Uh, anyway, uh, it's been a very good week. Uh, I work for Heavy Cat Studios. Uh, you guys can Google them. I, I drew something like 12 spaceships. It's been good doing this freelance stuff because I'm always doing something different. But, but you know, Buzz, I mean, you're working for yourself. You have to work two times as hard to make it. Absolutely. And, and like me, I, I'm basically a dime a dozen. I mean, there's so many artists out there. What really burns my biscuits is like I go on DeviantArt and someone's like, oh, I want this drawn and this style. And so I, I, I tag them, like, I can do this, X, Y, and Z. They're like, well, I like your artwork. It's really good. It's not the style I'm looking for. I would like to reach through my computer and beat them. I understand it's not the style you're looking for that I have, but look at all I can draw. I can draw that style. Just give me a freaking chance. Right. So, so or, or the thing I really hate, uh, cover your ears uh, for those who are, like, 13 or below, but these people are whoring themselves out. I'll draw stuff for $5. Really? Do you live in your mom's basement? Is this, and, and what can you really draw for $5? I can't draw anything for $5. Anyway, it's been a very unique experience doing the freelance thing. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited to be back here with you guys. Uh, Nina, your pictures. I, I, when I talked to you today, I, I thought about this. I'm like, because the first thing I said, like, you got a goofy smile. And you do because you're being silly. But I love you right here. <laughs> brilliant, 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 brilliant. So Thank I'm, you. I'm hoping to see the pictures Buzz did with the Christmas tree, and all I can say is ho, 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 and we should probably get started. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. All righty. Right. Um, anyway, how's everyone doing tonight? Uh, first of all, we'll open up uh, for any quick questions. What I want to do is I want to review the homework. Uh, we have Santa Claus here on the screen. Uh, for my my class that got canceled because of weather last night. What we were going to do is I was going to take the Santa Claus and we were going to actually put a layer on top, do some basic shapes and change them up and put combat gear on one and an art challenge to make this dude evil, like the evil, nasty, naughty Santa. So I thought, well, <laughs> he's already here. So let's, uh, wherever you're at, Merry Christmas, Father Christmas, yada, yada, yada. So he's here. Uh, but let's open up for questions, and then I want to review homework. We're going to talk a little bit more about some stuff, and then we're going to jump into the lecture about color theory, about tints, about hues, about saturation, monochromatic colors, and analysis. It's going to be fun. All these big ten-dollar words. So, are you are you guys ready? I'm ready. Thank you. Thank Hallelujah. Someone's paying attention. Um, so, uh, whoever's my handler tonight, I, I actually, I, I tagged Nelson. I'm like, dude, are you my handler tonight? He's like, no, Buzz is. So, Mr. Buzz, see if there's any hands up for any quick questions, and we will jump right into what we've got to do. Nope, we're golden. Thanks. No questions. Well, that sucks. I'm going to take a drink anyway. Hold on. Ah, coffee. All right. What we're going to do now is I'm going to come over here, and uh, this is my interactive uh, here. This is my color wheel, which is awesome. It took me uh, probably about 20 hours to code myself. No, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I didn't, I can't code crap. So uh, uh, let's see. Learning to draw homework. Here we go. Stupid computer. Here we go. First of all, I want to say I apologize for the last week. I was deathly ill. I had family ill. I, I'm a very apologetic. I'm glad everyone's here with us. So this is actually two weeks ago's homework. We were talking about lights, shadows, and shading. And this is from Mr. Anthony. Anthony, I love your Batman. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, it, it reminds me of um, the dude who did 300. I can't believe I could. You guys know who I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's his name then? Don't know, but I know the movie. I mean, you know yeah, the Frank movie. Miller. Yeah. Frank Miller, thank you very much. Go, Frank Jason. Miller. You go. I would have liked to see more shadows in through here with the cape. I really think they should have been there because the folds. Uh, any, anyway, brilliant. Well done. Uh, again, Anthony, good for the shadows. This on top. This is really, really dark. And I really love this area right through here. But again, I, because of all the other shapes that you've seen through here, 
Uh, hey, Nelson, you just signed on. Uh, <laughs> I can't tell where that lighting source is at. Looky here. Who did this? Bastion? Bastion, uh, yeah. Bastion. I like this. The tones are really pretty. I wasn't asking for color. I wanted more of um, the shade. If you look in here through the, the, the cape, his cowl, I like how I use the eraser to use the highlights. A little flat in here through the tummy, although I would I mean, not although I would like. I mean, I do have a stomach just like that. I'm just that's what I'm just trying to say. Uh, Bastion again. I, I I like what you're doing um, all through here. The backlighting. And if you guys remember last or two weeks ago about lighting, uh, I actually had to refer to my notes to do some concept work for a new video game for some guys in uh, the UK. I'm like, okay. Crap, I just went over this in class, what lighting sources am I going to use? So it's been very helpful to me. I really like this from uh, Mr. Christopher. I like that he has the entire thing that he basically cut and paste. We have the original, we have color, and this we have what we have here. Uh, I like the lighting source showing a very harsh, hard light. Boom. And then he's milked in shadow. I really like that. Uh, let's see. Connie, Connie, Connie. Uh, not bad. I like the cross-hatching effect. You know, I, I have to take a step back. Cross-hatching. We were talking about that two weeks ago. And this thing that I did that rhymes the Bambaroo, uh, I was doing my own comic book style, and I, I really liked it. I'm not going to lie. I liked the style, and this person kept pushing me more towards cross-hatching. So, again, referring to my notes about cross-hatching, uh, when I worked on all this concept stuff, and we're going to go over this tonight for coloring. Um, I usually would have something like 10 by 15 and 300 DPI, but because he wanted such detail, I learned a very valuable lesson. I, uh, no matter what I work on now digitally, it's at least 300 DPI, and it is at least 20 inches by whatever but I have to work big, so when I do shrink it down, it's just like the real world. If you look at comic book pages, they're like 14 by something. You draw them big, you ink them up, they look nice and slick, but they look a lot tighter when you shrink them down. So even digitally, when you work big, shrink them down, it is a good rule of thumb to go by. Mr. Donald. <clears throat> wow, that kind of looks like me. I want to be Derek. I'm so sexy. Look at my almost buzz-like beard I have. Uh, sorry. Uh, all right. Um, good shading. Evan B., I really like this. I like the transition you got going on. I can tell the light source is from the left, darkness is from the right. Well done. Dude! I almost thought uh, Nelson did this. This is really nice. I like where you're going in with this. Uh, I like to see a little more definition in through here, but well done. Well done indeed. Uh, I like this for a comic bookie. He almost looks like, ooh, I put my bat pants. Uh, so you, you, <laughs> you gotta, you, you. Okay, the other thing I really learned from uh, working for this dude from LucasArts guy, faces are, even with a cow, all we can see is this expression right here with his lips and his eyes. He, you got to work it. You got to work that runway, baby, uh, because right now it looks like Batman farted or he sharded, and we won't even go in what sharded looks like. Otherwise, I really <laughs> like this transition through here, the line weight variation. Well done. Ooh, look at here. Very nice indeed. I like, you know what I would love, love to see, and this is neither here or there, but I would have used the eraser to have a little dot here and a dot here for his eyes like he was going. But well done. Light from the back. Very good. Jane. Jane says, Derek is super sexy. Thank you, Jane. I really appreciate that. Um, we're going over here with Batman. I like this. He's like, oh, my bat ears are a little flappy. I need to take some bat Viagra for that. Thank goodness I have my utility belt. Um, I like what's going on here. <laughs> I, wait, listen, guys, seriously. I know I'm a little crazy. Uh, my wife has been gone until 8 o'clock tonight, my time all day long. In the last two days, I've been with little kids. I know I'm talking to myself, but at least I'm talking to mostly adults here with silly minds. It's nice. I don't have to worry about diarrhea, poopy butts, runny noses, and ears. They're asleep, and I'm in my element. So I'm going to be silly. Back to reality. All right, Jane. 
I like this double light here. I like the light on both sides. I like the halo that you created. Well done. Oh, Jane, you just made me very happy. I love this working through here. Look at this line weight variation all the way down here to the small veins and, uh, and the forearms. I love this transition through here. Well done indeed. I'm proud of you, man. That is awesome. I would have fixed the ears. They look a little bit haphazard. That's the only complaint I have. I like the cross hatching right here. And the other thing I really love is like I love the harsh, bold lines that you have framing everything up. Jeffrey, oh Jeffrey, looky here, our Captain America. I love it. For those of you who did not know this, uh, I did go over a 38-story building dressed as Captain America for Special Olympics. I rappelled down. I had a rope. I didn't actually fall down. That would have sucked because my shield that was plastic and cost $32 only stopped small pebbles and, 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 and airplanes and made of paper. Uh, this little kid's like, what is your special power? I'm like, uh, I have a shield. So anyway, <laughs> Mr. Jeffrey, the god of war. I look at that. that. Seriously, that's me with a tan because I'm even actually whiter than that because I'm mostly Irish. We got Superman <laughs> rocking it. Jeffrey, this, you're choking me up. You got Wolverine going on, Batman. You know, let's step back here for a second. The faces that I drew, you turn them into everybody. I mean, you got Daredevil. Well done. I'm, I didn't ask for color. Uh, I'm still seeing the, the shading or the light set, especially with the God of War. We'll just call him for, we'll call him Derek for now, for lack of a better word. Hello, Derek. I like DD. I love the highlights that you pushed uh, and for his uh, his chest and such. Jeffrey, well done, the Batman. He looks pissed. Like, ah, that other guy pooped his pants. That made me look bad. I want to beat him up. Uh, I like how you have your your different colors here. That's a Nelson thing. I like that. Uh, let's see. Joseph. Shadow. Joseph. I, I, I can't tell. I, I can tell that there's shadow through here because it is, it is pitch black. But through here... Uh, I, I, I would prefer to see more shadows and harsher lines back through here if, indeed, the lighting source is there. Uh, you got it going on here, dude. You really do. Uh, top light, yeah, we'll probably a few more shadows. Uh, two lights through here, I can see a little bit going on, but there should be more shadows over here. Lee, Mr. Lee, if that is indeed your name. I love this area right through here. It's kind of a, like a silver surfer. Uh, uh, when you're bald, like myself and Buzz, and most sexy men are bald. Is that, can I have an amen? Amen! Uh, it is true. And Nina's giggling and she knows it's true. <laughs> um, hair is way overrated. Uh, but you have to look at, uh, I guess, uh, what is the material? The light is, is, is bouncing off of. To me, this almost looks metallic. I can see where you're going. Down through here, the double lights, we need more shadow and through here to give it kind of a halo-like look. Lee, looking good, buddy. I love this transition through here. On my monitor anyway, he really blends in well to the shadows. Well done. Uh, let's see. Who's that there? I'm Derek's biggest fan. You're so hot. Stop that, you silly thing. Um, light source from the bottom up. Uh, not bad, okay, but my, my question is, if he's all lit up through here, where's the shadow coming up through here? We, we really have to dissect, think things through. I like the new Batman look you've got going on here. I'm Batman with a cold. <laughs> That's my uh, Michael, the other dude. It's been the last three. Can't stand the guy. I really hated the last Batman movie. That's just me saying. I did not like it at all. And dude, I got a Batman Jeep. You guys see my Batman Jeep, right? It's a black four-door black on black Jeep with a bat symbol on it. I lived for this movie and I was very disappointed in the last one. Bane sounded like speaking spell. Would you like to? It's like, I want to see him. Seriously. <laughs> I want to see Bane and uh, who's the dude in the wheelchair? Uh, the scientist. Uh, would you like to discuss the galaxy? That dude, I like to see them get an argument. What did you call me? I called you a butthead. B U T. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. Okay, my, my, my question is your light source is down through here. 
boom, it's a push in here. Why is his head? I can see the transition. I can see where you're going with this, but this is not actually working out. I like this a lot better. We see the light source directly up above and the shadow cast from his, his, his jawline. Uh, well done on that. Uh, we're going to keep going through. Nice job, nice transition. I really like this. I can tell you guys are working in Photoshop. Again, I think this is actually my favorite one, two light source. Uh, Nibby, talking about Matt, Batman. He reminds me of uh, Adam West from Batman going on right here. We're drawing, pay attention to the ears. Very important face. Very, very important. Okay, going here to Mr. Ray. You can call me Ray. Oh, yes, they call me the street. Woo! Who can tell me? Race. Who sang that? Ray Blake. Anybody, Nina, can you tell me? Streak. Anybody? Oh, I know, but Anybody I can't his remember up? his name. Because you're so young. Mr. Busby, can you tell me? Say it again. They call me the streak. I can't remember I the dude's name. First name's Ray. Last name is, it rhymes with Beavens. And it's my last name, Ray Stevens. Ray there Stevens. you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. There you Beavens go. and Bambaroos. Uh, <laughs> Ray. I oh, sweet. Dude, you get a golden star, man. Uh, I, oh, poop on a cracker. Hold on, let me go back here. Um, I like the background you put in there. I like this. It's like someone spray painted. Like, I'm a cat woman. I, uh, I'm Jenny Craig. <laughs> but I can tell it's kind of like a cat woman. I really like the background. Well done. I can tell the lighting source and through here. Look at this harsh black. Well done, indeed. Steve. Dude, did you do this? Seriously. Is this yours? Dude. 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 Sweet. What's mine say? Dude. No, what's mine say? Sweet. Uh, dude. <laughs> and then? No, and then. All right, Steve. That's let's dissect job. this. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm very impressed. I actually like this uh, little piece right here that, that cuts through uh, the corner of the panel. That face is freaking epic. I love the ears. You you get a gold star. I, I'm I'm bowing down, Mr. Steve. I am not worthy. You better be on tonight because and look at this. Look at the okay, it's his right left his left hand is melting out of the shadow. It's melting out of there. I can see highlights where the lights are at. Well done. And even this transition here from his nether regions, his naughty parts, uh, from the gray to the blues. Well done. Very stylistic, and I love that face. Well done. Let's see here. Ooh, backlighting. I can I can see that. I like the small halo that you got going on. And ooh, I like some of the red going on. Uh, well done indeed. Nice use of color. Because that's a very good transition. We're going to be talking about color today. Oh, my God. Who did this? It's like, I'm not satisfied with Batman. I want to be Robin. <laughs> I can. I, oh, that's I, I, awesome. I, that is awesome. <laughs> well, I like that. I, I, okay, first of all, again, because we're going to be talking about color tonight, uh, I like the red background. I like the red use. Um, there's all sorts of different tricks to make things pop and for stylistic choices. It's a brilliant stylistic choice. What I would have loved to see down through here, the feet. Uh, it almost looks like he's got bear claws, and I'm not, di I'm not wanting to take anything away from you, but everything else is so strong. I would have liked to see you maybe put some more shadows down here. It would have been okay if the red would have blended through, but I needed to see the ends of the shoes. I liked that these straps through here, it's almost a bulletproof vest. I love the harsh spot blacks that you've got going on. Again, is this me? I would have liked to put a little dot here and a dot here for some... Uh, I would use my eraser tool, smallest dots, just to give the glint of eyes. But uh, Winlots, well done. I'm very proud of you. Wolf Knightley. Oh, my gosh, Wolf, look at this. This is brilliant. Two-point light right here. Again, this is still my favorite lighting source. I really like it. And I, myself, I need to master it most of all. Okay, we're going to go through all this right here. There's no... Like, oh, I have a light up here. I have a light down here. I have a light down here. These are easy to spot. This one right here, you guys can see my little cursor, right? Boom. We have shadow here, so the light source must be coming from here. Right? Yes, everyone's nodding. 
All right, let's talk about this one here. Again, shadow through here is very reminiscent of this one, Mr. Wolf Knightley. Still well done, but it seems to have the same thing going on. I'm going to come over here. Lighting source has got to be up through here because we're seeing shadows up through here, uh, more down here, and definitely underneath the chin and his pectoral region muscles. You know what I'm talking about? I always wanted to see Massachusetts and Arnold Schwarzenegger take together and kind of marry. I like to see him run his girlfriend to Massachusetts because I think it'd be really fun to hear him say that a lot. I'll be going to Massachusetts and the export of aliens because I kill them all. Um, well, let me go back here. You know his policy on aliens. We've seen the movies. Uh, I really like this. I really love how Wolf drew or the indications of very strong pectoral muscles. Uh, nice use of light, shadow, and highlights in through here. Well done. This one is supposed to be backlighting. So ideally, mostly this would be all black because the lighting's in the back. I love the eyes. That was well done, Mr. Wolf. Wolf Knightley. Okay, I like the transition. Oh, look at the hatch marks, man. Look at him go. I was just talking about hatch marks. Uh, you did well. I can see the basic shapes. You got the muscle mass. Uh, it's there. I want to continue to uh, to work on that. And we have done all the homework that has been turned in. Excellent. All right. Excellent. Well done. Again, because I want to be a thorough instructor, I want to open it up for questions. Mr. Busby, anybody have any questions? No, sir. If any questions come in, I'll make sure to let you know. <clears throat> Brilliant. Brilliant, then, I say. Let me make sure my little mousy thing is working here. And we're going to come back to my Photoshop. Hello, I'm Santa Claus. And I see Mr. Busby. And uh, this reminds me, I'm giving a specific shout-out to a Miss Angela Busby because she was around for the first class, and she was brilliant at it. Very great at I see her in there, Angela Busby Doodles. <laughs> is, she, is she in class? Yep, she's is in she class. Because I told Buzz tonight, I will kill Santa Claus if he does her hand in homework. And I mean it. <laughs> I will eat his reindeer and I will kill him. I see he a, did a, a say that. I did. I seen a beautiful comic today. It was on Facebook. Santa Claus is eating eating some cookies and reading a note. And it's like, dear Santa Claus, I want to bike a pony and such and such. And if you don't give it to me, I will not give you the antidote I put in the poison in your cookies. And he was like biting the cookies. <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it was brilliant. brilliant. I wish brilliant. I thought I, I wish I could have done something that well. Um Okay, here we go. And real quick, oh, I just sorry. wanted to let Nina know. Nina, I made you an organizer. Oh, so I can see questions uh, now? So you can see questions also. Wolf okay. had just asked you a question that you can res respond to over in the questions panel. Sorry about that. No, quite, quite all right, sir. Uh, we have a huge uh, wasp. This is uh, one of my concepts for a game way, way back when. Um, I was actually going to, I was working on the centaur chick. I love hot chicks. Even though she's a horse, she's better than the bamboo chick that I've been drawing. And my little girl's like, oh, what's that? And I'm like, well, this is a big wasp. And I thought at the time, what better to, to throw up color and concept than a wasp with a buzz, the 3D buzz sort of thing going on. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Because this is 3D buzz. But um, – I guess if there's no more questions, we're going to start talking about color. Uh, color. Color is important for a lot of reasons because if you get color wrong, if you get colors that are, are too close together on the screen, they have a tendency to almost buzz. And uh, it's actually called analysis. How do you say? Help me out. English analogous colors that are next to each other uh, that, that, that squeal like a purple and a yellow. Uh, we're going to talk about that more. But color is important because I, I keep thinking about Darth Vader. I love Vader for many reasons because I, I really believe I'm a Sith of heart. And if I was a Sith, I would go to like the Olympic skating, like tryouts, and make people trip all the time with the Force. And that's how I gain my dark points. I would make people trip all the time. If there were kids running through the hallway, trip, trip, trip. Um... Like I say Darth Vader because he's solid black. How about if Darth Vader was black and pink? 
and no, 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 those are some kind of cool colors, but it's not the mood that Vader conveys. Do you guys get my drift? Vader is a dark, evil, icky, not pink hello kitty sort of thing. You don't go, hello, Vader. doesn't have the same ring as a hello kitty. So to understand color, what we need to do is we need to look at a color wheel. And uh, if you come up here, <laughs> that's not it. Interactive color wheel. If you guys want, look here to a screenshot, or I will paste it up and give it to Buzz. <coughs> Excuse me. Still a bit coughing here in a little bit. But this is a very cool site because this is our color wheel. Um, back in my day, when I went to college, when I had to like run from dinosaurs from class to class, um, you know, I was trained in, in classical airbrush. I loved airbrush, but you had frisket to worry about and you had the cost to worry about. But we had to make a color wheel. We had to do everything by rulers and tape everything off. And we had to take the color wheel home to, to paint. And I'm not kidding. I watched Bravehearts. I watched Hamlet with uh, Mel Gibson. And I watched Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And if you see on the screen, after all those movies, I got from the blue down to the red because we could not have any paint strokes. I had to do this by hand. And I hate doing crap by hand anymore. Seriously, Buzz has ruined me. He's made me want to be digital. Uh, and I can't do it anymore. No, I, I, granted, I, I still do comic book work. I do it by hand. Uh, it, just, it feels better. But everything else is, is done digitally. Uh, and to try to make things dry faster back in the day, I, I broke two hair dryers blow drying this crap. And when I finally, you know, the next day we got all the way through here and I got back to class, my instructor's like, ah, oh, what'd you think of the red? Uh, I'm like, well, the red is pretty easy, but, you know, it was really hard to dry. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I could have told you to mix some white in there. And then it would have been easier to dry. I don't know why it would have been easier to dry, but the guy's an ass, okay? He hated digital. He didn't like anything. He was old school. And I want to be a mix of old school and new school. But we're going to talk about color. Anybody know what primary colors are? Red, it, green, blue. Well, the brilliant thing about this little shoot. Thank you, yeah. We come over here. Blue, red, and yellow. Oh, whoops. Yeah. No, that's, hey, that's all right. It's all right. I'm, and why are they primary colors? Does anybody know that? And why don't you take somebody up? I want to hear someone's explanation, if you can, Mr. Busby or Miss Nina. Yeah, actually, Nina, handled. if you don't mind watching over there okay. in the chat for a minute, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, no. Or the questions panel. Okay. Because I really want to make this as interactive as possible. And I want to be able to yell at people. I've been reading what Buzz has been doing, and I feel like like he's okay, the Simon I Cowell. I am watching the questions panel, and I am waiting for someone to tell me, what do you want to know, why, why those colors are the primary colors? Come on, space monkeys. All right, somebody ra raise your hand in the... Well, actually, somebody just wrote, typed it in. It says, because you can mix them all into all the other colors. Who said that? That was Robert's answer. Mr. Roberts. And he says, brown for the win. Mr. Roberts, indeed. You can. And again, I don't want to insult your intelligence, but primary colors cannot crap. They, they can't crap if they were indigenous too. Anyway, primary colors cannot be made by mixing. All their colors, you're right. So every the blue, the red, and the yellow, we can make any other color. But you can't make blue. You can't make yellow. No, these these right. they have to already like be in your like. You have to have those particular colors to make everything else on the color wheel. And I know this is very elementary, but again, this is this is drawing 101. Mm -hmm. So after the primary colors, we have what? The secondary colors right here. And the secondary colors are green, purple slash violet slash orange. And those are made by mixing the primary colors. So the way I look at colors, it, I, I look at my artwork because 
when I draw, I make at least at least three passes. I'll do the first pass, which is hold on, get over here, the primary colors, and then I can use my second pass for the secondary colors, and then we mix it all up the secondary pass to the tertiary colors. I like to say tertiary. I was walking the other day and slipped on some ice and fell on my tertiary. <laughs> silly. And the tertiary colors, I am, I'm very silly. They don't really have any special names. They're like yellow green, yellow orange, red, red orange. Again, they're not any special colors, but they're a mixture of all the colors together. So, Again, let's recap. You got the primary colors, blue, yellow, and red. The secondary colors are made from the primary colors. And from the primary colors, the secondary colors make the tertiary colors. Everyone says, hallelujah, amen, yay. And now this is where I feel like I'm uh, one of those ladies that work behind the counter uh, to make a place and spray perfume on you. Yes, Mr. Busby, you look so nice. Would you like some CK for men? Tss, 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 tss. Because we're going to be talking about warm colors and cool colors. If you look at the warm colors, the warm colors are on your right or left-hand side of the screen. Right-hand side of the screen get it warm colors like ooh red fire ah orange i'm on fire you guys want to hear my impression of the first man landing on the sun oh crap it's hot ooh, ow, ow, oh crap 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 it's hot so uh the warm colors let's look red purple red red orange and orange we can picture literally warm colors like fire from my fireplace right now that's dying down i'm getting cold i have to throw some more fire on I have some more wood in the fire. I can't throw fire on the wood. <laughs> That'd be cool. And I said wood twice. Uh, cool colors. <laughs> At least Nina laughed and snickered. You can throw fire cool. on the woods. Maltoff cocktail. Who But I girl. digress. You colors. No way. You're all street, aren't you? Like I got Maltoff cocktails on. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, I'm staying. <laughs> cool colors. Okay, let's sing a cool colors. I think of Dead, uh, The Walking Dead. And I, we have to talk about the game, The Walking Dead, that just came out on Xbox, because my wife and I have been playing that freaking awesome game. It's got a vector render to it. It makes it look very comic bookish. And, and the choices that you have to make... Okay, hold on. I'm taking my little my pointer off. We're, we're going to talk about this game real quick, because what I, why, what I work personally towards is video games. That's what I want to do, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing concept for this video game. And I won't give anything away... My wife, who is this little blonde, petite, size zero, innocent-looking chick who's been in the gun range a couple times with me, and I'm like, I'm a hardcore. And seriously, I, I don't really want to kill Bambi, but I can honestly say that I have no problem rendering anyone friendly who wanted to hurt my family. But anyway, in this game, this dude and I are breaking into this, this place to steal more supplies. And this chick, she's like, ah, she's like down the street. She comes running out and she's screaming. All these zombies start coming towards her and she gets bit. And your character's like, hey, man, we should help her out. And my wife, who is this, this God-fearing, awesome, lovely lady, she's like, she needs to die. I'm like, what? She's like, she's already bit. I'm like, what? I'm like, we, we have a stroke, we have a gun, a weapon, we, we might be able to take some of these zombies. I said, no, she needs, she needs to die. She can, like, bring up those zombies to her and they'll let us get our supplies. And that's what we did. Because of my wife, this is crazy. It's a great game. And especially, not only the story, but you need to look at it because of the vector render. And we'll talk about vector renderings here in a little bit. But uh, I, I talk about The Walking Dead because we're talking about cool colors right now blue green blue blue purple and i think about that from all the different hues of, of drawing undead so many different times so nina can you follow my my thought pattern there yes all right thank you very much <laughs> thank you so uh we were talking about colors rgb red green and blue colors and what are our, our rgb let's look at here we have red Blue and yellow. Nope. Red, green, and blue colors. These are the, the, the colors that are on your screen, this computer screen right now. What we see in life is not RGB. It is RYB. 
it is a light reflecting off things like off posters, off murals, off the walls. RGB is an additive. Yes, indeed, say an additive. It is illuminated from a computer screen or a, a, a screen from your TV. Uh, it is all analog sort of things coming on. So you have two different color schemes that you have to look at, RYB, RGB. But most we're going to be talking about RGB tonight because we're all looking at our computer screens. And we're taking a small drink. Oh, I'm taking a drink right now. Uh, any questions as I drink? I can try to sing a drink at the same time you guys are here. I don't see any questions. <laughs> That was me singing as I drank at the same time. That right. was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. What's awesome, really awesome, is when I get my my ventriloquist dummy and I put him on my lap and he teaches a class with me. You guys will never ever see my mouth move. Haha, <laughs> because <laughs> we can't see you is why. <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much. Okay, we have these things called hues. <laughs> I mean, like, yay, he is special. Um, we have these things called hues, saturation. All right, what is a hue? Anybody? I'm looking at you guys. Well, actually, I can't really look at you. Like, All right, you look at me. tell me. I want someone to answer quickly. Who's the first to answer? What is a hue? Someone says, a color. Literally, it is what the color you see is a hue. So I say blue, you say a hue. <laughs> I write it, and I'm a poet, and I'm a word. Okay, saturation. Okay, so we, the hue is a color, all right, and saturation. Uh, that is how the tint is colored, because you have different sorts of tints of hue. You have a bright hue. You have a dark hue. You have <laughs> – hold on. That Almost cough done. was supposed to be gone. I'm just kidding. I know, right? I'm almost better. I'm almost better. But the saturation is you have the color and your blue is saturated, either dark, medium, or light blue. And I know this is like tomato, tomato. I'm going to say it. I don't want to. Tater. No, that's potato. Down in the south, they say taters. And, oh, maters. God, I hate that. I really... Really, I, I hate Tell that as much really as I hate. Feel. Seriously, I hate the word taters oh, and maters. We have just a question. About as much. Ah, okay. See, I'm in, I'm interrupting your tangent really quick no, no, for, a, for a question. Uh, someone wants to know <laughs> if you are going to go over the differences between RGB and CMYK or additive versus subtractive, etc. CYMK. Who said? Who, uh, who said that? That was Ty. Ty, C Y M K. Ask Ty, or I'll ask Ty. Is Ty <laughs> in the advertisement? Ty. Hello, Ty. It is I, Derek Stevens. C Y M K. C Y M K. You have to use that in ads and for magazines. C Y M K is the ability to make all colors in the rainbow in print. Okay, that, that, that's what you got to do, CYMK, that is for print as opposed to RGB, because CYMK, will look, you, you can't mix CYMK to get what's on your computer screen for RGB. Um, so that, that's a very good point. Whenever you're, you're doing something concept work, comic book work, you're dropping color and stuff, uh, there's a place in Photoshop, oh, where's my pen? Let's drop back into Photoshop. Again, this is not a Photoshop class by any means, but we can go to image. We can go to mode up through here, and you can look. It's an RGB, red, green, blue, or you can go to CYMK. So if you have to ask yourself, what are we doing this? Are we going to be doing this for print? And I really don't want to flatten this, so I'm going to cancel it out because I'm not doing this for print, am I? This is on my screen, so it is now RGB. But it is a brilliant question, and I hope I answered your question for you. Did I tie? Oh, additive, additive and subtractive. Uh, Addi subjective. He said sort of. Mm. Sort of. RGB is an additive. It is illuminated uh, colors from your computer screen. Um, RYB, red, yellow, and blue, uh, you're taking away colors because it is literally bouncing off what you are seeing. It is light reflected off of an object uh, like 
look at your walls. You have a picture, a picture frame, the lights that are bouncing off. When it bounces off something, it's subtracting from 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 the color scheme. Okay. Where you have our, does it, I'm sorry, go ahead. He, he's trying to clarify. He says, if you're doing work for print but doing it digitally, would CMYK look like balls on the screen compared to using an RGB palette? I would have to say balls the wool, yes, because our screens are set up for RGB. I mean, this is what this is what it's for. This is what our TVs are for. Um, you are defined by the parameters of your job. If you're working for print, because seriously, the last thing you want to do is if I'm doing a killer pinup for somebody and, I, and I've screwed up like this before, I've learned from my mistakes. I'm doing a killer pinup and I have to drop color on it. And I have these killer hues because I'm using RGB in my computer. I send them the file. They open it up. They're like, oh, it's, it's RGB. And let's convert it and see what happens. You're not going to get the same conversion from an RGB to a CYMK that's going to go to print. The other things you have to worry about is uh, whenever you're doing something for print, it's got to be in a TIFF format. It's got to be at least 300 DPI. DPI is dots per inch. A lot of uh, the company, Heavy Cat Studio, I, I do a lot of work for now, they want it 600 DPI. And it's got to be a PNG, I think it's PNG format, because it's a computer blah, blah, blah thing. So there's a lot of rules and parameters. So my rule of thumb, whenever I'm starting to work for a company, I ask, I ask them straight up, hey, how do you want it? What format do you want it in? Because there's no such thing as a stupid question. But if you don't ask these, these simple questions, they get clarification, and you do it wrong, you do. You look like a fool. And they may not may not work with you again. So my rule of thumb is it's easier to ask questions and and get it right the first time than to beg forgiveness because you messed up. Does that make sense? My wife's shaking her head. She's being a smart aleck. And she can't even open a drink juice. Oh, she just got one. Okay. Does that make sense? Everybody says that makes not. sense. Ty? He says yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I'm doing a happy my, – my ventriloquist dummy, who's named uh, Nina uh, – Mina. I'm sorry, not Nina. Mina. My ventriloquist name is Mina here. I don't make sense. She's not really good. But oh, my goodness. Seriously. She's on my lap. She's the old-fashioned kind. I have to pull a string. I don't have a cool, like, handheld thing. So, is that good, Mina? Yeah, it's good. Okay. Um, Fantastic. So, all right. So, color schemes. Let's, look at, let's talk about color schemes. I want to talk Harry Potter stuff. I know this is going to sound crazy to you, but think about Harry Potter. All right. Slytherins. Who can tell me what color scheme Slytherin is? Anybody? My wife, she'll you can't tell anyone, Candace. I'm the boss here when I'm on the radio. Urgh. My wife knows because I like Slytherin. Somebody's she's, saying she's black, black, green. Green and? Green and silver. Somebody, uh, green, Risen Force says green and silver. Roger that. So let's go back to, hold on, to our color wheel here. Let's look at green. Green, the complementary to green is actually green and red. It's Christmas colors. So we're not actually using complementary colors, but it's a good color scheme. The green pops out really good to silver. How about Hufflepuff? Anybody know what Hufflepuff is? Hufflepuff? Anyone? Because they're like kind of the bastard child. Someone That's says yellow and word. black. I believe it. Yeah, yellow and black. Let's look at yellow. Complementary is purple. Purple is close to black. Could you imagine if it was a yellow and a green? When we're looking at color schemes, you want to make sure things pop and match. Uh, if we have a yellow and a purple next to each other, we call that an analogous color. What happens when you're using RGB when you're on the computer screen, you have a, a the, the purple and the yellow next to each other, it, it almost vibrates. 
seriously almost vibrates and this does not look well so whenever you're doing a concept for say a wizard all right all right and what i want you to do miss nina mm -hmm. is i want you to look at the hands up there okay i want the first person to tell me is this wizard that you're doing a concept for is the earth wind fire or air okay earth wind fire or air and there's a follow-up question, so whoever, so whoever it is, we'll have to talk. Wind. Wind. Who said that? Alex. Alex. Hello, Mr. Alex. Um, are you able to get Alex on the, the computer talky thing? Alex, would you mind speaking with us? My puppet, Mina, not okay. Nina, but Mina is like to talk Let's, to Alex. All right. We're going to. Do you have a mic, Alex? It's a follow-up question you went to you answering wind. Do you have a mic? Okay, here we go. All right, I'm making you a presenter. Hello. Hello? Alex? Alex. It's a cool screen. Very cool. I can't hear him. Well, but look, I see his picture. What an ugly sod. No, I'm teasing, Alex. I'm teasing. Okay, Hi, Alex. his mic must screen. not be working. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can barely. Hear now. Yeah, I'll set to Windows default device. Okay, there you go. Can you turn it up a little bit? Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. Pip, pip. Yeah. I'm one of these kids. I can't help it. I'm sorry. He's working. Oh, we're Max. Okay, well. Look at Alex go. We'll, we'll make Derek be very, Max. very quiet. Oh, I can hear you now. Okay, Derek, ask your question. Hold on. Hear me now? Yes, much better. I can hear you now. I yeah, can... I'll just turn up the next amp. Well done. Hey, Alex, where are you calling me from? I feel like, where, where are you from right now? In Maryland. In Maryland. So you're on the East Coast. How's the weather up there? Warm. Oh, it's really cold. Mm -hmm. Man, it's freaking cold here, too. It stopped snowing. It hasn't snowed here for three years. What? Three years? Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah, global warming. It just completely stopped. You remember the snowstorm two like three years ago? It was like yeah. three feet of snow. Ever yeah. since that, it just never snowed again. Wow! Wow! Well, kind of like us here too. We two years in a row we had like a foot to two foot of snow, and that's why we got the jeep. And then it's like nothing. It's like Santa Claus is like I, I I don't need my chain on my my reindeer sleigh because there's no snow there. Wow. But anyway, I digress. We're going to talk about wizards, and it's not really necessarily a concept class. But we're going to talk about colors using for concept. Okay, if I have a a wizard with wind, do you think red when you think wind? Nope. You know, like blue <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> right, Nina, you have to give me that. This one break of coughing. Why do you it's think more of clouds though? Because when you're pulling wind, you're pulling the clouds and the wind particles. Exactly. So. We already have a preconceived notion of a concept of uh, of a wizard who uses wind. It is it is a blue, and what is a hue? Can you tell me that? Because we're going over what we just learned. If you can't tell me, I shall have Santa Claus beat you. You? A hue? Don't you Google that crap? I know I, we can see your screen. You said the saturation of a color. No. How much light is picked up? The hue is just the color of blue. This a color. The hue is red. The hue is blue. Now the saturation is the different variations, light, darks, of the different colors. So we're going to talk about saturations of a blue for the wizard. And when I'm thinking of a wind wizard, like I, I totally agree with you. And it's hard to think outside the box because, okay, here's my two cents. Everything out there has already been done. It really has. It's our job as, as concept artist to artist to find a new sort of thrill to it. So 
what sort of spin can we put on this wind wizard? Okay, we know blues. What is the complementary of blue? Anybody? Complimentary of blue. Someone says. Haven't done that one site. Orange. What? Orange. All right, so let's try to tie something in with a blue and an orange. And it doesn't have to be oh, the we hue. We have gold of and we have brown and yellow. Well, we'd have to consult my color wheel because I live okay, and die so by the color Okay, so let's wheel. go back to your screen now. Thank Roger you very that. much, Alex. Alex, you are brilliant, sir. You know what really makes me feel bad? Alexander the Great. He conquered the most of his known world by the time he was like 20. I don't even have my car paid off and I'm 40. All right. So we're talking about blue. And so all of orange. our, we've, so what I can see here, um, people have said gold, brown, orange, orange, yellow, do, 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 greenish blue. Okay, the direct complementary color from anything is directly from the opposite side. So orange is blue, blue is orange. Now, if we're looking at this blue right here, it's a blue green. What is a blue green? It is a secondary or a tertiary color. Blue green to a red orange, that would be the complementary color. But I really believe if we had a solid blue, a different saturation of blue, if we jumped over here, utilize the blue green to the blue, and maybe the little purple, these three warm colors up th or cool colors up here, and brought it down here to an orange. Maybe to make our wind wizard different, we can make him a wind earth wizard. Because when I think of oranges and browns, I think of earth. And those are the things I start to think of. And already I can think of some cool, I, I can picture this, this hot looking chick with her fingers curled up with all this power as, as cascading through her body, flying in the air and using telekinesis to bring all this earth and, and just to shatter it all, throwing towards, you know, the camera. And her robes or her, her outfit would be a blue tinted with orange and browns. And how did we come up with that? We're looking at the color wheel and we're looking at what is complementary and we're trying to think outside the box. Does any of that make sense to you? Yes. It does to me. Well, thank you, Mina. Let me consult Nina. Nina, <laughs> did, did, did you like what we just talked about? I understand. With the, I was watching the color wheel as it showed us, and it was amazing. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm talking to my ventriloquist dummy right here. Because we have a Mina and a Nina. Okay, I named her after you. Hold on. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm sorry, she's <laughs> she's really upset because you keep interrupting her. I did not interrupt her. Continue, sir. <laughs> she, she's loving what's going on. All right, so hey, let's talk about a monochromatic. Not to be confused with... Neanderthal, or any other, that was a brilliant word, was, just escaped my mind. Anyway, monochromatic. Everything is the same hue. You would literally have, uh, I'd have to go back to Photoshop, hold on one moment, because there should be language image mode. We have grayscale. I don't have a monochromatic. Huh. Well, bullocks. Monochromatic is everything. It is the same hue. It is the, the, the same color sort of shading. Um, crap on a cracker. I don't have an... Uh, mm. All right, we're going to skip that. We're just going to move right past that. All right. So basics, primaries, to recap, reds, yellow, and blue. You're going to mix them up to get the secondary colors. And after the secondary colors, they make the tertiary colors. And what's really cheap and easy now is everything on your color palette right here 
again, we're going to be talking about Photoshop stuff, if you can see this, is we have in, in, in Photoshop and in uh, Maya, Maya, we have the third plane. We have X, Y, Z axis. The Z axis would be the third plane. And that's neither here nor there. But the X as the limit of, sorry, I said asses. I meant access. I pause dramatically. X axis, if you look at my computer screen, goes this way. The X axis is your tense. And what is a tense? The tense from here to here is adding white into the spectrum of things. And what is the y-axis? The y-axis is your ups and downs. Your ups and downs, you're adding shading equals the blacks to it. So if I wanted to add a bit of darkness, a bit of shading to my red, I can come back through here. If you look at this area right through here, it starts to get darker, 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 because I'm adding blacks to it. Suppose I go to my blues, because we got our air wizard. And, you know, your art director's like, ah, I'm a, I'm a purist, and I'm going to talk in these big fancy words for you. I don't like that color right now. I want you to add a bit of white to it. We'll tell you what, I want a different tint of blue. You're like, ah, tints, what the crap is tint? So write it in your notes. Tints are your x-axis. Your tints, you're adding whites. You're either going to add more white, which is going to make it lighter. Less white is going to be darker. So you're going to start with your true value. The more white you add, the lighter it gets, the lighter it gets, the lighter it gets. And what's brilliant about Photoshop is there is no paint. Paint fumes, paint smell, paint cleanup. You can just do this and you can get whatever color that you want. All right, questions, comments? Any questions? Um, while we d I don't see any questions, but we've been recording for about an hour, so let's say we take a little break. Would this be a good stopping point? I can do that. When we come back, what I'm going to do is, uh, with this, this buzz theme that we've got going on, is we're going to color this. And there's different... There's, there's tons of different ways to color things in Photoshop. And this is not a Photoshop class, so I'm going to make this as basic as I can. I'm going to talk a bit about Feng Zun, I think I say I pronounce his last name, who's a brilliant concept artist. It's a, it's a procedure I learned from him. Uh, we're going to paint color using layers and the cheap, dirty down, and easy version. All right, so for this. how long are our breaks usually? Ten minutes? Uh, 10 minutes. Take a 10 minute break. Okay, we're going to be back in 10 minutes, everyone, and we shall continue. Thank you. Ta ta. We're, <laughs> we're back, ladies and gentlemen, from break and go for it, Derek. Well, hey, welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a good potty break, uh, drink break. What I'm going to do again, this is the beginning class. It's a 101 class. You walk in the classroom and everything's basic, not quite kindergarten, mind you. I know you know the difference between uh, the short end and the dull end of your pencil. The dull end is your eraser, and the sharp end is what you do rendering slash drawings with. Again, going to the 3D Buzz theme, uh, my, my Photoshop, uh, let me activate my tablet real quick. What I want to show you is uh, my image, and I'm going to go to image size. I have this resolution at 300 dpi. I have it by 20 and I have my constraint proportions on, so that means if I put this down to 15, it's automatically going to constrain it to its original size to 19. But I don't like digitally anyway. I want to work with at least 20 inches high by 25. And again, it's the constraint. It does it automatically for you. <coughs> Forgive me. I say okay. So I've got my background layer. I've got a layer here. And what I'm going to do now is make a layer. I'm going to name it C-O-L-O-R. Or I could use U for you English people. I wait for Paul's dramatic effect. And Nina's like, what the hell? <laughs> anyway, because they spell oh, it differently Derek. over there. They, they spell cooler. Cool, cool. <laughs> All right. All right. Everyone listening here, everyone's saying this. We've got this 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 bug, this wasp. We've got a stinger, we've got the wings. Uh, very faintly, uh, let's say he or she, uh, it's got some sort of staff thing here. What I want you to do is uh, 
I, I want you to throw a color out to me. What color? And again, I, because we've talked about this, let's say we're not going to use this for print because it will be easier. It's going to be just for computer use only. Image, I'm going to make sure my mode is RGB. Hold on. Okay, it's an RGB. That's cool. So that's good to go. It's is this for computer screen or TV or video? So we we got that sorted out. But uh, by raising hands, first person to raise a hand, that's the, the primary. And by primary, I mean, it's not a red yellow thingy. As the main color that this, this wasp is going to be. So raise your hand and throw out a color for me. Okay, starting now, throw out a color. <clears throat> Wolf Knightley says blue. Well, what a quinky dink. I've got a blue. Now we're going to use a hue blue and recapping because that's what we do. A hue is the actual color. Or are we going to use a saturation of blue? So the rule of color in painting is you always start out light. Always start out light because you can always make it darker. But is it pain in your backside to make it lighter? So I could start out a little here. But Wolf Knightley says blue. And remember, let's recap again. If I'm going this way to this way, I'm on my X axis, and I'm doing different tints of blue by adding white to it. The real true blue, let's do 50% in the middle of a light blue. Does that work for everybody? Too bad. It works for me. <laughs> All right. What we're... Uh, living, you know. What we're going to do is I'm going to push B for my brush. I get my brush tool out. It's set at 35. I've got it on a solid. I've got my opacity, my foot, 25%. Okay, everything 100, 100. I don't really necessarily want that. I'm going to put it down to, uh, say, about 64%. All right, and I'm going to hit Control Space Bar. I'm going to bring this up real close. I see you, Nina. You're so sexy. I love you so much. Wait a minute. Didn't I have to get medicine to get rid of this guy? Never mind. That's another story. What we're going to do is using my color layer. I'm not layer one, my main one, but I'm only color layer using my brush. And again, this is a Feng. Forgive me if I butcher his last name. Feng Zoom. Uh, this, he's a good concept artist. I like what he's done. He's done tons of stuff. What I'm literally going to do is I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to come in through here and paint my blue in through like this. Now, I'm still staying in, in my color lines, right? But what we can do is on my first layer, turn down my opacity and see how light to dark, light to dark this gets. So if there's any overlap, like right through here, I can hit my E for my eraser tool, come in through here, and color where my blacks should be, or erase where my blacks are at. And again, there's tons of different ways to actually lay down color. If this is a solid, I could select areas, and then I can hit Alt-Delete to throw color on top of it. What I'm doing right now is very, very basic. Hit my brush tool again, Bring this up over here. What I plan to do is, since blue is the primary or our, our biggest color, what I'm going to do is the biggest parts of the exoskeleton. I'm going to hit the head here, uh, the thoracic chest area, and through here, and then I'll probably do the legs and um, the arms. And we had blue. a couple of yes. people uh, came in and just said. Um, asked if you would prefer to put the color layer uh, below your lines layer to preserve your black lines. So, like, just drag it. You could drag it down. One, we can do that. And if you want to, and, and pre to preserve now, your lines. Again, not, not a Photoshop thing, right. but I really want to, for many reasons, um, you guys ever watch, what is it, uh, Karate Kid? Wax on, wax off, wax on, wax mm -hmm. off. The dude's like, why are you making me wash all your damn cars, dude? And he's like, no, throw to hit me because Danielson, you suck, a suck, a suck. And Daniel's like, ah, do A lot of this reason right through here is, <laughs> shut up. It, seriously, my, my brush to you're, what, what Basically, what is you're saying is there's method and a reason for you putting it the way you're doing it. Right. Okay. The reason I'm doing it. Uh, a lot of people... 
this makes me think of Leonard, and to me, to a certain extent, I've not been analog hardly forever, and it's not a Photoshop class. If you right. guys are using tablets, I want you to get used to using the tablets. And what better way than using the tablets is by laying down color, and you're understanding where everything's laying down, and then you're understanding your hand-eye coordination by coming in through here and erasing these lines like this. And we will have a Photoshop class on many, many things here in the future. I promise you on that. Okay, let's just color through here. And I can tell, and I know you guys are cringing, you're like, oh, is that different blues? It's cool. It's all good, baby. What we're going to do is we're going to use the burn tool and the dodge tool here in a little bit. And we're going to use some levels. And we're going to use some saturation tools. This is all going to be good. It's like whenever you, um, I'm trying to think of a perfect analogy. It's like, okay, my wife is awesome, perfect. And so are you, Nina. Perfect, gorgeous, and everybody. But if you had a girlfriend that was kind of questionable, she looks good kind of in the morning. You roll over it, and it's not really a coyote ugly. You don't need to bite your arm off. It's like, ah, the lighting's really good in here. She's not so good. Okay, it's just kind of like we're doing. This is like the girl's base layer, or the guy's base layer. He's not shaved, and he's smelly. Whenever he, the dude shaves and bathes, we're going to do these things in different passes. The girls are like bathe, shave, because girls shave too, or if they're not French, and, and they look pretty, prettier. Okay, everyone with me so far? Everyone's like, well, what in the hell is he talking about? Probably what in the hell are you talking about? So, we're using the blues. You're laughing with me or at me? Uh, a little bit, but a both. <laughs> All right, using the erase tool. Is that me. okay? Ah. That's okay, right? I, I, that's cool. I'm good with anything. <laughs> like I said, but next time I see you, I may have to bonk you on the head. That's okay, I'm used to it. <laughs> All right. Okay, ideally, this back leg, I'm going to make it a little bit darker with my, my, my burn tool here in a little bit. Now, if you can see these different colors and stuff, it's because I keep lifting my pen. Oh, dark, dark, dark. If I keep it on the same level, here we go, without lifting it up, it looks the same. That looks sexy cool. Okay. Again, I'm working fast as I can. Because I know time is money. Seriously, time is money. But money is time. What is time? Time is money. That's Joe versus the volcano. Tom Hanks. You're just a plethora of knowledge. I'm a plethora of something. You are a plethora of a lot of things. <laughs> I'm okay. Really, Buzz. If you can hear me now, you so think for a reason for me to get there. And I'm going to bonk her in the head. And we can record it and make a video on VTM of bonking. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the reason Just I want to color your big. little thing there. Thank you. My little thing. Okay. Okay, look. I bring it back. There's some little highlights, yada, yada. This is as much as the blue as I want. Hold on. Let's, let's do this for blues. I'm going to come in through here. Hit my brush tool again. I'm all blue. Little boy blue. He needed the money. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> Rated G. Yeah. Rated G. <laughs> Oops. Uh, poop on a cracker. Get over here. And for those of you who are like, well, I can do this. It is kind of difficult to do this on the pressure. You know, whenever I do this in, like, real life, I, I'm drinking coffee. I have music on. And I'll have – I'm getting texts from Nina right now. You guys can't see this, but it's it's like, hurry up, you idiot. I'm going to tell Buzz you suck. I did not. No, he didn't say that. I called you a dork. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I am a dork. That is that's definitely right. But you know what? Dorks will rule the yeah. world. Yeah, takes one to know one. I'm a dork too. All right. Okay. Here we go. Hold on. And we'll be taking our time if this is like a paid gig. But 
Here we go. We got some blues. It's, it's nice. It's we're going to pump this up all. Wow, look at this. Boop, boop. We can pump it all the way down to nothing. Whatever we want. Okay, we're going to leave it right here. I'm going to make a different layer here. I said a different layer here. We'll call it color two. C O L R two. All right. We got some blues laid down. What other colors are we going to look for blues? Now, before we, we get a volunteer, do we want to use a complementary blue? Do we want to use a tertiary, secondary of blue? Um, so, are, so are you asking? Okay, I'm watching Buzznet. He wants to know sec up. Oh, we already got uh, someone's complimentary. All right, ten thousand dollar question. And if you get it wrong, you will be beaten, and Santa Claus will die, and the world will be ruined. What is a complimentary of blue? Hands up. Orange. Who said that? Ray Lewis was the first one that says orange, followed by Wick. Then Winlet said purple, and Wolf says orange. Chandra says puce. Puce. I love Chandra. I just puce. love saying puce. <laughs> puce. Let's let's go to our will, shall we? Uh, all right. So we're doing the true blue, and what is complementary? It is the opposite direction, and that would be orange. I'm not sure what a orange puce for the is. Wind. Orange. What is a puce? Like puce me. I just tooted. <laughs> no one's laughing. <laughs> We're laughing on the inside. We're laughing on the inside. Yeah, right. All right. So <laughs> I hate everybody. All right. So are we gonna call this orange? Can you, Nina? Ten thousand dollar question. Is this orange? Um. Um. um really hold sick. on. I switched. I switched computers. I can't see. Looks orange to me. Okay, listen. The reason I ask, and this really sucks, and, and there's got to be more people than just me, but I am semi colorblind, and uh, <laughs> as an artist, to, don't That's laugh. That's a challenge. At me. It is a challenge. I mean, I can see a lot of hues, but sometimes I get things mixed yes, up. Yes, that is orange. I was right. I was switching right. desks. I was giving Jason his desk back, so I couldn't tell. But yes, you got it. All right. Cool. All right. So again, we have color two on this layer, not color one, color two. We're coming through here, get our brush tool out again, and we're going to color this area through here. Oh, look, I have orange on me. It's so You sound pretty. like that dog. What is it? The puppet dog. <laughs> hmm? Keep coloring. <laughs> Tell me, I want to know I can't what puppet his name. dog is. You sound like a puppet dog. You sound like a puppet dog. I like to talk to myself all the time. What's really bad is I do this when no one's around me or I'm not on the radio. I talk to myself when I'm doing stuff too, so don't feel bad. I think a triumph the in insult dog. Yes, Wick. Oh, triumph. Yes, I love triumph the insult dog. Yeah. Did you see him when he was talking? He was like at the Star Wars convention thing, or not convention? I was like episode two came out, and this this lady was pregnant, and she's out there. He was like, "You realize that when your baby is born, that is the last female genitalia that you will ever see." Oh no! He did. He said that, and then dark, this dude named like he's dressed in a Vader suit, right? He comes out. And uh, he's like, that's such a cool outfit, man. It's so good for me to poop on it. But seriously, seriously. He said, uh, so uh, what button do you have to push on your chest for your mom to come and get you from the movies? I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm a dork. So okay we're that. painting away in beautiful orange, which is a lovely complimentary color to blue. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Again, I'm hurrying. I'm doing as fast as I possibly can. Again, because there's method to my madness. Right? I'm hurrying. What do you want to talk about? Hey, Color. have you seen The Hobbit yet? 
No, well, besides we, that, we can't. We can't do spoilers on Hobbits. Well, I just want to know if it's good. I thought so. I've not seen. Uh, I may have told this story before, and if I have, forgive me. But when I was at the Wren Center, when Jason was teaching there, I went there, and my wife was there, and anyway. We went to see, we were there for like all three Lord of the Rings movies, right? Mm -hmm. And the sexiest thing my wife has ever said, nothing dirty, nothing profane or gross or questionable, but she's watching The Hobbit with us. All the guys from the Ren Center went, and she looks at uh, Gollum, she goes, she's Derek. I'm like, yeah, baby. Because she's like leaning in close to him, thinking, oh, boy, I made some kisses. And I ain't always like that. She's like, is Gollum, is he, is he subdivisions or nerves? And I'm like, baby, I looked in her deep blue eyes. I'm like, that is the sexiest thing anybody's ever said to me before. <laughs> when I first started at the Rin Center, and this is no joke, you know, uh, we're talking about vertices because uh, we're doing polygon modeling. And I had, uh, had a dream that my wife broke her like foot. And I'm like, oh, my God, broke her foot. And her foot had these vertices that I had to meld together and merge, meld, weld. It just depends what uh, 3D application you're talking about. But that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to break up the, the routine as I paint Take and away. do this. And again, whenever you guys do this, it's not, I don't want to say there's any correct way to do it. We can do, we're talking about drag layers down, and that would be great. But I really want you guys and gals to work on hand-eye coordination. I think this would be a great exercise in it. Okay, we have the blue, we have the orange. Uh, we need at least one more color. Anybody? Okay, what's the next color, guys? Red. Wolf Knightley says. Winlet says purple. Red. Leonard says purple. Mm. Alex says yellow. All right, let's look at our color wheel here. We just did orange, correct? Complementary is blue. Let's look at our secondary colors. Green, purple, and orange. We did the orange. So, this is me I talking. see. So we, well, we actually had um, Winlet say purple. I would have to say purple because of our tertiary colors. Ah. We still have a blue, purple, purple, and a red orange. I'm thinking purple. Purple, purple. So we're going to go the dark purple. And I'm going to call it. <laughs> <laughs> And forgive me, pretty please. No, you're doing a lot. Right. You're sounding a lot better, though. A lot better. <clears throat> I still haven't been back to my MMA fighting class, and I'm kind of disappointed in that. Don't I feel wish... bad. I haven't worked out in ages. It's a bad thing. It is if you're a model. I know. Pull-ups. See, hand-eye coordination is a must. And I'm butchering it all up here. Do, 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 do. Brush, 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 baby. Everybody dance now. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, I'm sorry. Learning to I'm draw really... with music accompaniment <laughs> by Derek Stevens. And what is your last name, girl? Well, never mind. You don't have to say it. I'm sorry. You might want to be like Sting or, you know. No, it's Covington. Sure. Covington. Yeah, it's in my screen name up there. It's no, no I can't see. <laughs> I can't see that. Oh, well, we have a little antennae. We'll go ahead and make them purple as well. Let's shrink our brush down a bit. <laughs> And we can come in here and the eraser bit come through here. Wow, wow, wow. 
So have you seen The Hobbit then? Yes. Um, Jason took all of us to go see the Hobbit, see the Hobbit the other night. It was very well done. I enjoyed it very, very muchly. Muchly. All right, Aww. this is good enough. All right. So again, let's look at this. Our image, and with even all these mistakes, I'm pointing at my screen. I like to go out and look at it, and I can I continue to do that. But my image, I go to image size, and it's at 300. It's by 20 by 20 or 25 by 40. Anyway, I'm going to shrink it down to eight, eight inches actual size. And my computer thinks, dun, 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 dun. and that's the actual size. And the actual size looks pretty like, oh, cool. It's kind of tight. When in fact we know it is not tight. I hit Control Z, and it brings back everything to life. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to come back here because somebody asked about texturing, correct? Correct. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to hit www. Geo Google Goo Geogle dot com and I'm gonna hit honey comb. Now, this is the first thing I thought of, okay? And you can use any texture. And I know this people say that's cheating. Well, we're on a time frame. Uh, I like uh it's got a little B on it. We don't want a little B on it because it will look kind of Bad. If I put a B on my bonnet, my bonnet on my B, so I'll pick this here. My computer is refreshing. That's fine. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy, copy my image, and then I'm going to go back into Photoshop. Hit File New. Then I'm hit OK because that will bring up what I need to hit Edit and paste and I've got my honeycomb in my Photoshop and what I'm going to do is what I like to do is as I'll come in through here with my magic wand tool and make something like that and I don't want to cut it because if I cut it I'm going to have to go back and get this again so I hit copy all right so my computer's like okay I've got this I've got this I know this I know what it looks like I know what it looks like I know what it looks like what do you want to do with it we've been doing with it we do it oh crap crap here I've got it I don't want to forget it here I go I'm going to hit edit and this is a high work there's tons tons of different ways to do it I'm going to hit paste and you see it it's on a new layer. I'm going to hit my area right here, my little pointer thing up here, so now I can move this around. I'll tell you what I want to do. I'm going to bring it up through here, and because it's this layer selected, my opacity, I'm going to bring it down. Now it's transparent. I want a little more transparent. There we go. And now I'm going to hit Edit. I'm going to go to Transform, and I'm going to go to Wrap. And you're going to see all these little things, uh, for better lack of better words, we're going to call them vertices. And see how they start to mash and meld. And all I'm going to do is bring it to where my orange area is at through here. Like this. And it's hard to talk and think at the same time. And my computer's talking to me. All right, I'm going to hit enter now, and it's there. So I'm going to hit my eraser, and I'm going to bring my eraser up like this and erase the areas that I don't want to have this texture in. It'll bring it up to me a little bit more. Again, you can do this differently with different layers. Bring my eraser tool down a little bit more. Make sure my black lines are still showing through.
And we can do now, because the opacity is at 55, we can mess with that. I'm not necessarily like that so much. I like the blended look. We can bring it back here like this. So let's do this one more time. We already know what we have and we want. We have edit, because I've already selected. I'm going to hit paste. Brings it up again like this. Let's do his backside. I'm going to come to edit. I'm going to come to transform. I'm going to go to wrap. I hit my opacity down again to 63. And now I'm going to start to wrap his bottom. You can't wrap his bottom. You're not a rapper. I'm a rapper. I worked at Barnes and Noble. I wrap things, you know, for holiday. You mean like presents? Yes, like presents. I'm not like the Beastie Boys. I wish I was, but I'm not. All right, here we go. There you go. There you go. All right, it's in there. All right, that's. I'm going to get my eraser tool again, and I'm going to come in here. Let's beef up my eraser tool a bit more. Bring this closer to us. Bring this in here like this. Beef it up more. And again, once you understand the pain of what I'm doing, you're going to understand layers a lot more later on. You're going to remember this really sucked doing it like this, but you're going to learn a lot from doing it. And the most I really want from this one on one class is your hand eye coordination to be stellar. Does that make sense, Ms. You know? Yes. In other words, right. you know, this this may not be the most technically correct way to do this, but this is, is giving them more practice in using the stylus and drawing the shapes that are making up this bug. Thank you very much. I could not have said it better if my name was Wolf Knightley. I just wanted to throw it out because it's the first name I thought of. Hello, Wolf. Hello, Derek. Nice to see you again. And we'll throw it back and you can already see that we're getting a nice texture to this and I'm not going to do through all this to color everything but what we're going to do now is all right layer three I need to uh, the bum that's his or her bottom all right and we're going to name this layer two top side meaning the top side. So what we can do here, I think some really interesting things going on through here is this area right here. You're not a Photoshop class, but if you get down and dirty, I'm going to hit the the burn tool and come in through here. And every time I pick up my stylist, you can see things through here starting to get darker. Right, right. Or what we can do is come up here through image, image adjust, adjustments, levels, and we watch things. Oh, I'm really dark. I'm not so dark. I'm dark. And a lot of this is playing around. I like it like this. I like it like this. You know, another trick is you can make it super dark like this. You hit OK. Then you can get your eraser tool and come in here and really start to define things. Let me subtract it more. And really get this sort of segmented look through here. Now, does that make sense? Yes. And we can talk about more of the dodge tool. We can talk about airbrushing, this and Which that. That goes uh, along with your, your shading. Correct? Correct. Very, very, very true. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. And then we'll, we'll start wrapping everything up. I'm going to to make, uh, because we have purple complementaries, yada, yada, yada. I like the purples. I'll make a dark purple and hit OK. I'm going to come up here to my brush tool. I'm going to pick this uh, airbrush area right through here. I'm going to enter. I'm going to come up through here like this. Hit brush. 
I want my opacity, I want it even lower. I like to start out really nice and low. Uh, maybe not so low, we'll say 50s. And I can start airbrushing and through here. And the reason why it's purple is because this is primarily an orange area, but we're using purple as accents. So if we can tie everything in together, it makes it look that much better. So now we have a purple-orange color that we can blend in with everything like this. And then I'm going to hit this is solid black, coming to my color picker. And now I'm going to pump this up a little bit more, not all the way, but I'm going to 70. And I'm going to make it my brush a bit smaller. Actually, let's bring this up to a 90. And see what's going on here. And what we're doing in this area right here, if you remember from the line weight variation, what we can do with our airbrush is we can start brushing top side this area and through here. Let's pump our power opacity. I don't like that either. There we go. And through this area right here so we can give a, a thicker line with variation. So uh, let's recap. We went over the primary colors tonight, secondary, tertiary colors. And we threw a really quick sort of, uh, I guess, texture on. We're talking about line with variations. Again, this image here is at 300 DPI at 20. We'll bring it down instead of 8 to a 10. Let enter. My computer thinks. And right now through here, we got a lot of really cool, interesting textures going on. Just by typing in honeycomb, you can come in here using your uh, eraser tool for different highlights. And let's get really weird and wacky. I would never really do this, but let's do it for illustrative sakes. I'm going to come into layer. I'm going to flatten my image so we have everything on the same layer. We can come up to image, image adjustments. And let's start with just the levels alone. Come into levels. Let's tweak them a little bit. And a lot of it, the way I, I, I do it by feel, there's no no real science. I can't say X equals Z and you have to do A, B, and C. What I really like to do, this sounds silly, but I always like to come here and invert it. Like, oh, that's kind of cool looking. Then I hit Control-Z, then I never use that, but it's always kind of cool to see. And then hue satur saturations. $10,000 question, and, and you'll have to pay it name about me because I'm an artist. Uh, what is a hue? Anybody? Recap. What is the hue, guys? Type it, Type it in BuzzNet. Uh, Ray Lewis's color. Very good. So it's kind of weird because it says hue slash saturation. So we're taking the color of whatever it is. Right now it's in green, but green, but we're going to saturate it, and that is how it's a tint. So what I like to do is I'll literally come in through here and I'm like, ooh, it's pretty. It's really, ooh, what, you know what? I kind of like this a little bit better. Let's see, that's kind of cool. I like this area through here. Eh, so much, not so much, not so But I like the red area because it's kind of fleshy looking. Then I'm going to hit OK. Bring my uh, burn tool back in here again. Here it is. And start again moving through here to make it look like it's layered. And that's literally what I would do. I keep working it. Maybe use my eraser tool. Um, Jane would like to know um, why you reduced the size. Oh, why, why I reduced the size was because I wanted to show you. Again, this is this is so not a finished product. But at uh, 20 inches, I wanted to show you how tight it would be at 10 inches. Even though there were so many blurring mistakes and so many of the spot black areas weren't shining through because I didn't take time to erase areas and yada, yada, yada. I wanted to show you if you work big, 
and you shrink it down, how tight things look. Uh, that's the reason. So ideally what I do is I, I bring it back up to 20 inches again. I'd start coming through here, working again. And I bring my brush stroke down even more to bring these areas through here like this. And then we bring it back. You know, I see, again, this is going about to the, the real textures, if you will. I threw the, the quick, cheap honeycomb texture on there. And I'm just, I'm, I'm playing around, playing the hues, I'm playing the saturations, I'm playing the levels. And I mean, you can even come in here with image and you can go to curves. What are the curves here? Um, you do all sorts of crazy things. Jane asks, so you work at the larger size and then save the finished piece smaller or do you save different sizes? Uh, what I do is I'll do t I'll do two because God forbid you you get something and you're like oh this is so awesome this is exactly what I know what the art director wants and you meld all those layers like I just did that that's a no no you meld them all and you're like this is awesome and I'm gonna shrink it down it's nice it's tight I'm gonna send it off I'm gonna go drink some beer or an adult drink or some whatever you drink and I'm gonna do an Irish chick because you have to do that after every rendering that you do and it's awesome and the director's like uh, no I like everything but X and you're like what and X means you'd have to really redo everything you need to save your rendering in in Photoshop layers, layers are your friend. Because what do you come in and say he doesn't like the blue look? Remember, we saved the blue look in an opposite layer. Right. So you could go back to that layer, you could erase it and make a new layer, and then say he wanted it yellow, that all the blues he wanted yellow. You, you can do that. Well, she's curious so what, about what I, the sizes that you save them at. No. Oh, I will save. I will save everything in a huge layer, the 20 inch layer, or I'm sorry, 20 inch size in all the layers. That's for me. So if the art director comes back and tells me, I don't like the blues, can you change that? Then I have everything originally where I, I needed it to work at. But what I'll send off to the art directors or the producers is I will send it at half size, 10 inches to 8 inches, really depending on what they want. But I work big. When it shrinks down, my work looks tighter. And the tighter it looks, the more professional I look. So they see, oh, it's, oh, that's nice. It's slick. It's good. But I don't like X, Y, or Z. So they give me feedback. And the other saved file that I have is the original of the 20-inch size, everything in layers. Does that make right. sense? Um, Derek, it looks like um, a few people have been following along and i have uh one uh jeffrey once would like to show you please what, please what do that be awesome and if anybody else would um please do raise your hand and i'm getting ready hold on to go over to jeffrey's screen in one moment all right and i'm making jeffrey the presenter you guys ever watch couplings um, no, uh-uh. That's in English. Oh, well, look at nice. that. Great job. Well done. Can we, can we get Jeffrey on the line? Because I, I want to he hear what... I don't know if has a mic or not. Jeffrey, do you have a mic? Because if you have a mic, I want to know your workflow. This looks brilliant. And you just threw in my homework assignment. I think assignment he may here. not have a mic. Well, that's okay. If this is a homework assignment, he's just got to jump ahead of everybody else. He did. Maybe he can maybe he can just like improve upon it and touch it up and stuff. Jeffrey, I'm really proud of you. Let let me kind of analyze what's going on. You have you followed along with the different complementary colors. Brilliant. But what I really love is your background. I love the gradient style. I love the shading that I see in the forms. I'm Muted. Unmuted. Muted. Hello. Anybody there? Sorry about that. No, no, no. I heard muted. I'm like, that really didn't sound like Nina. But it... anyway, even to the leg, 
where the, the hatch marks are at towards its backside. I really like this. This is nice. Well done. I, and again, I love the gradients from the blue to the white. Well done. You definitely know Photoshop. Great job. And would anybody else, if, the, if you're following along, would anyone else like to show their work? That's my Mina. That's my little dummy here. She wants to show her work, but unfortunately, <laughs> she's using an exasketch, and we can't really see that. Um, oh, Robert uh, says he hasn't done color, but he'd like to. He'd like to show his idea. Please, okay. please do. One moment. Let me jump in and make my him little a my little dummy's exasketch says there red rum. What does that mean? Robert, Red let Rob. me find the other guy, Jeffrey, and meet. Check out his drawing there he's got going on. I like that. I like the basic shapes, his buttocks. Big, bulbous, rounds, <laughs> millions. Very, very nice. Well done. Well done. Indeed. I don't know Ooh, do, if he has a mic or not. So like Robert? Okay, now I can hear you. Hello, Robert. Hello, Derek. Yeah, with you, uh, the textures, I mean, I'm quite fine with the production way of doing things, but I feel like you need to learn the other stuff before you do that. Otherwise, I feel like you might be missing part of your education. Oh, and definitely, like I said before, textures are something that will be visited. Right now, we're just keeping it very basic and... But you well, actually, I didn't even plan on doing textures right. tonight until someone asked about it, and I just wanted to throw something down and dirty that was nice and easy for everyone to see. But no, I totally agree. Textures is a different animal all itself. Um, now, don't get me wrong; I'm not going to lie to you. If they wanted a honeycomb sort of thing, I would definitely borrow an image of a honeycomb, but I would make sure that uh, the lighting. Uh, uh, the levels, the tones, there'll be tons more work into it. But I don't want you guys to be staring at a screen of a honeycomb while I work on it for like an hour or so. So again, keep that in mind. Later on, we may have a class just dedicated to textures. Um, be, the roundabout way is the saying is anyone can rip off an image. And a true artist needs to be able to, sh to understand that and to show that through proof of concept. Uh, we will get to that, I promise you. All right. Go on. I'm pretty excited for that. Yay. Good, good. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Robert. Uh, I love your creation. Well done. Well done. Okay, so I don't see if anybody else... I don't see anyone else saying that they have anything to show, so I'm bringing it back to you, Derek, so we can, you can wrap it up. Roger that. Here we go. Back to you. There we go. All right. Again, we have some interesting things going on. I, I actually kind of like this. I like the burn tool area and blah, 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 blah. And again, making textures is a different animal. It's almost like uh, in, in 3D when you're, you're you're making nodes and your own blend shapes and yada 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 it's an art all to itself okay mm -hmm. this is a 101 class and and i wanted to show you about the wrap tool this is not a photoshop class mind you but this will allow i guess uh the layman so to speak lame person to give you some really cool tips and tools later on we're going to talk about everything and this is a deep Deep, deep program uh, to get into. So it's it's another class entirely. Uh, to recap, we talked about RGB. We talked about RYB, CYMK, about what's going on for print. Uh, we've talked about hue, saturation, monochromatic. Uh, Nina, say that for me. Monochromatic. Monochromatic. See, you can't say that in other way. Can you? <laughs> Monochromatic. <laughs> it just doesn't no, sound no, as no, good. <laughs> no, no, you have to be. You have to be like, ooh, I've, I'm blistery. I'm, I'm, I'm dramatic. I'm, I'm monochromatic. Uh, analysis. 
I don't think that's, I'm saying that like, by golly. <laughs> uh, I, I, silly English is a state making Deutsch reckons their quota, but English is a schlecht. Uh, color basics primary red, yellow, blue. Uh, I will give Nina the post to give you guys okay. the color. Yeah, wheel. email it on over to me. I shall do that. Um, and what is our are very important. homework for the, this week, sir? Homework for this week. I, I, well, until now, I was going to give you the, the, the buzz sort of thing, uh, what we have in front of you. And I wanted to see uh, line width variation uh, because mine could be, um, I guess, it could be trampled on a bit more to make a bit more uh, popping. Okay. And I, I, I want that. And I want to see what you guys can do with the colors. And what I want you to do, uh, it. it I'm going to say it because I'm not sure it's a he or she. It's got this the staff thing. So we're going to say it is a, a magic user. It is a magic user. Uh, and it is an element magic user. It is either going to be earth, wind, fire, earth. So those are the four themes that you can work with. Is it a fire thing? So the fire, I, uh, it's like, that means in, in bug. Huh? English? I'm casting fireball. No, I can't say that. I'm a bug. I'm casting fireball. I'm casting wind spells. So what I want you to do is, is tie in either it's a wind, earth, or fire creature casting a spell. Okay. And I, I want you to to briefly, in like a couple sentences, write it's this is a fire wizard, and this is why I use these colors. Uh, I, I can't see a fire wizard using blues in, in your color scheme, unless you can justify. Oh, and um, I need you. Wolf, I'm so sorry. Before you go, I want to uh, go ahead. One more, one more question after that. Yes, okay. yes. Keep going. Oh, I'm done. Okay, so um, <laughs> Wolf Knightley wants. I thought I, Wolf Knightley wants to know um, really quick. He wants to know if he, we can take his screen so we, he can see his improved uh, Batman. Well, I have mixed emotions about that because if he's got an improved Batman, that means he's not listening to what's going no, on. No, 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 no. He submitted two different. Oh, okay. Because yeah. so I was going to say, I'm going to grab a screen really lead. quick so he can show the uh, the other Batman. Right. Well, I was going to say that Wolf Knightley is very brilliant, and he could probably, like a lizard, look there right and go. left and haphazardly out of both eyes and pay attention. Check it out. I really like that. Nice. Ser no, seriously, I love the third version. I Wolf. I love how you did step by step. I love the line version, the split black version, and then the gradient version using cross hatching. It's well done. Seriously, Great job. well done. Proud awesome. Of you. Great job. Well All done. All right, bringing it back to you, Derek. So homework, we're gonna get, we're gonna we supply them with the bug creature. Yes. And they're gonna apply everything they've learned so far. Their line width variation, shading, and they're going to choose a color scheme based on whether it is an earth, wind, or fire creature. Roger that, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. complimentary or tertiary or all that well, good I, color stuff. They don't have to. They they don't have to use logic. Okay. Seriously, that they don't have to use logic. Now we we we've already established that these are the primaries. These are the tertiaries, the secondaries. Now the, there's a rhyme for the reason. This is why these are connected. But if they can make it look good with a justification, I'm going to be an art, uh, I guess, an art critic slash director. Next homework assignment, uh, I may like pull people out and say, "Okay, you made this yellow, but he he's a wind wind fire or wind caster. You need to justify this. Why is he yellow? I'm going to be a hard butt okay. ass." like donkey okay. okay i want to be more like buzz I, we, we we got to establish and, and represent so next homework assignment i'm gonna give you props everybody for doing this stuff because you, you don't really have to but you're doing it and i really appreciate it and i hope i'm helping you out but i want you to know because the next homework assignment 
the classes are quickly wrapping up. We've already gone over basic shapes. We've gone over uh, we've gone over shading. We're going over colors today. We've gone over lights and darks. Um, I'm going to be hard on you guys. I'm going to be the art critic. And let me go back, and we're going to wrap up quickly. But again, going back to the Renaissance Center of Buzz, uh, in my class, Travis and, and the student named Monkey Butt, this is his Christian name, mind you, is what he called, we called him because he farted all the time. Uh, and it really smelled what I would imagine to be Monkey Butt. Um, Buzz, he fed us really great at the Renaissance Center. Uh, we, we came in there, it was like 6 o'clock at night, and he gave us an assignment. He's like, okay, here is your, your, your 3D mesh, uh, your model, and I need you to model X, Y, and Z, and I need you to figure out how this model here is going to grab X to Y and do all this sort of stuff, and I'll come back for you in, like, the next day. So they, we basically got locked in there, and it's and, and, and mind you, we already had class from like nine o'clock, or actually I think it was eight o'clock in the morning until five. We had an hour break, came back from six, uh, and then we ate, and then we were locked in there from six, and then we had an entire 24 hours to work on all this stuff. And so literally we were up past 40 plus hours and we're exhausted. And I remember uh, actually sleeping next to a bunch of machines to hear this humming sound because everybody else was snoring. And Buzz came in and he was like banging on crap. Was, dunk, 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 dunk. Wake up, wake up. And he was pretending to be like the angry art director. Hey, listen, I need to know where we're at. We got to do X, Y, and Z. I need to see every one of their progressions at. And, you know, he took our screens and showed where we were at. He's like, that's great, but we just got word from our client. We need to change X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, I poop myself. I'm like, what? So we literally, we voted. Everyone was cool, so even though we were exhausted. We were in there for another day and a half with basically no sleep. And what Buzz, the whole thing was he wanted to see who was going to sleep and and – I guess, take care of themselves so they can be productive. Because a lot of guys, a couple of guys in there, they just didn't sleep at all. And the more time that passed, the less productive they became. So I say this all to say that this next assignment, I'm going to be more like that. I'm going to be the panic art director, and I'm going to ask you, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why, why is this? And you need to justify everything. So you need to know about line width variation. I need to know where your lighting source is at. I need to know about your color scheme. I don't mean to be a butthead, but these are real life situations if you want to be an artist that, that come up. And even if you don't want to be a real life artist, I'm going to have fun with you and I'm going to make you a better artist. With that said, any questions? Any final questions before we go? And bid you all a good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Guys and gals, thank you very much. I appreciate you. And hey, last okay, note. Okay, no questions. It, I see none. 21st December, the world did not end. No, it didn't. I'm We're still great. here. I'm very grateful. And we got lots of thank you Derek's coming in and they're ready to do their homework. So yeah, go ahead and um, send that over to me and I will... I'm going to start right now putting it up on on the buzz for the buzz. Yes. Roger that. Thank you guys and gals. I really mean that. Merry Lots Christmas to everybody. In. Oh, you're welcome you guys. Hey, thank you very much. You guys, you make me feel again going off that fiscal cliff of being a freelance artist and not working a normal job. This here grounds me and it makes me feel so good and Reluctantly, I say, because I don't want to sound like a girly man, but it really makes my heart smile. Oh, you know you're my, crying, my, my, you girl. Uh, well, you know, my, my little girls, before they went to bed, like, what are you going to do tonight, Daddy? You're going to draw again? I'm like, well, I've got my art class. And it's so cool because this, this literally is an international thing. And because of Buzz, I get to be here. And because of you guys and gals doing this, you're literally pushing me to be better artist. And... I wouldn't do all this stuff on my own unless I had to teach class. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Nina gave you my email address. You yes, I posted the help. email address in BuzzNet. Yes. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, have a great evening, guys, and we'll see you next time. Roger that. Bye. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Merry holidays and all that. <laughs>